Hi, my name is Jeremy Schulman. I'm also known as Network Automaniac on Twitter. And uh, I've been experimenting with um, some technology called Jupyter Notebooks and IPython, or what's called Interactive Python. Um, and I've been looking at this as a means by which we could engage with network engineers who are just starting out with Python. Uh, they don't want to become hardcore Python programmers. They don't want to write complex software, but they do want to start using Python in a way that is meaningful and safe, uh, for example. So what is a Jupyter Notebook? Uh, Jupyter Notebook is an open source web application that lets you create and share documents that contains live code and equations, visualizations, narrative text. So think of this as your notebook, but you can actually have snippets of code and run uh, code in them. So what, what does an example look like? Uh, here's an example of a Jupyter Notebook. Uh, this is for Matplotlib. And in it, you can have text. Uh, you can have code snippets, and the code snippets are represented by this in. And when you run them, uh, they would be out. You would see in and out. So right now, you're just seeing the ins. You're not seeing any outs. But what's interesting here is that you can uh, mix content, you know, text, hyperlinks, images. You can even have plots and graphs and uh, anything that's kind of significant here. So how could we in the networking uh, field use this as an example? So I'm going to um, show you a little bit of uh, work that I've been doing um, with some APIs. Um, I'm going to use NetBox as kind of my example here uh, because uh, NetBox offers a really uh, great API. It's an open source uh, DCIM IPAM tool, and I think this would make uh, for a great example. So uh, let's get started. Here I've got a Jupyter Notebook. It's running on my uh, laptop. And what I'm going to do is create a new notebook. Uh, running Python 2. And what this does is it gives me a cell that I can start typing into. And I can change this to markup. Uh, I happen to know that if you hit escape M, it puts it into markup. And I can say, you know, this, say this is a demo, right? And so if I hit shift enter, it runs the cell. So I can see that it's, that's what it is. And if I wanted to do some kind of Python, I could say, you know, print hello world, right? That's pretty simple. Okay, so I'm going to uh, import a library that I've got uh, for NetBox. And I, I have this library built in such a way that it offers essentially much the same you get from a CLI, like built-in help and tab completion and, and things of that nature. So I'm gonna say uh, from NetBox Pi Swagger. So the uh, Jupyter Notebook, when I hit tab, just gives me options that I can complete. And I'm gonna say dot and then hit C and hit tab for client import C, hit tab for client. And then uh, if I wanted to know what client you know, parameters took, I could do built-in help. I could say question mark client and hit shift enter. And here you can see that it takes a server URL API token. And I'm going to then create my first NetBox client. And my server is gonna be uh, this. So I can say HTTP colon slash slash, oops. Yes. And my token, my API token is equal to, um, I have a token from uh, that I'm going to use, which is the default token. And if it shift enter, I can see that I ran it because you can see like the little number here. And if I, if I just introspect the variable netbox, I can see that I have a client to this address. Now let's say that I want to uh, run a command, uh, a request. So this has a request object on it that I can hit tab on. And I can see all of the options that this Swagger API provides. And these names here are derived from the Swagger tags. So if you were to look at the Swagger spec, which you can do uh, from NetBox, if you click in uh, API here. And uh, if you actually do question mark format equals open API, you can see the JSON of all of the Swagger spec. And you can see that um, they have uh, a path and they have a tag. So for example, here is tag is circuits. And there's also an operation ID. So the Swagger client actually picks up these tags and operation ID values to auto build 
the capabilities of this client. So the client is always in sync with whatever the server has. So I'm gonna pick uh, IPAM, and if I hit tab here, then I'm gonna see all of the operation IDs associated with the IPAM tag. So let's say I wanted to create a, uh, a VLAN. I could say IPAM VLANs create, right? Because it's typing through. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna give me a uh, request uh, instance. Now, if I introspect request, and I was just, you know, again, just typing that out and running it, I can see that this is a request. I can see what the path is. I can see that it's a post, and I can see that it has a single parameter called data. Now, part of what this client allows me to do is I can introspect information about the parameters. For example, I could say, uh, let's say I want to just take a variable to it so I don't have to keep typing it. So I would say uh, request data. And if I wanted to see what I had uh, in, the, in the body, I could say, well, what do I have to fill in? These are all of the parameters that this body uh, has. Now, this information comes from the schema of this post. So if I were, if I were to look at this API uh, VLANs over here, I can see that here's the get and here's the post. And the post has all of these parameters. And this, then this parameter has a body, uh, this says that this parameter called data is in body and it has a schema and this schema has these properties. So this is where these properties are coming from. It's auto building based on this information. And if I tried to make an assignment that was invalid to the schema, I would get a, a validation error. For example, this VID is an integer, but if I tried to assign it something uh, that was not an integer, say VID is equal to foo, I get a validation error that says, you know, foo is not an integer. So this is really nice because uh, the client will pick up the schema and based on the schema, it'll validate whatever you're trying to type. Now I can uh, clear that output and I can say, well, I want VID to be, you know, 1002. And so that's valid. And then I could say, you know, body name is equal to Jeremy VLAN. That's okay. And if I wanted to validate the body as a whole, there's actually a validate function that says this, all of this body is valid based on the schema. Now, if I wanted to execute this request, I just execute the request uh, instance as a callable. So I could say my response and whether or not it was okay, I wanna uh, execute my request. So now I can see if the request was okay and it was. And if I look at the response, I can see that this is the payload that came back from the API. And if I go to the uh, Netbox UI, if I go back to the UI here, and I go to VLANs, I will see that I have Jeremy VLAN uh, as I have it created. So this is just a quick intro to this client and also a quick intro to using uh, Jupyter uh, Notebooks and how that's used. Uh, so hopefully this was um, interesting to you and I uh, hope you enjoyed.